Love it. Yeah. Thank you. Okay. Oh, I can't reach up. Hello, it's so good to see you today. Uh, we had, um, well, let's just say this. We had switched gears to working on the camper on the exterior. We've been feeling pressured to get it sold by Memorial Day weekend, just kind of knowing like when do campers normally sell. And so we're like, okay, we really want to get this done for like soon so we can get it listed mm -hmm. and get it sold. Um, I still wanted to spruce up the exterior of the camper. And so we started working on that. We had also last weekend, uh, we showed you our guest bedroom, which will be our foster care room. That's far enough now. That's to the point where we could send the social worker pictures and like, it really needed to have a bed in it. It's safe. Like it's, it, it can be cuter, but that they don't really care about that. <laughs> right. Um, so we had switched gears back this past weekend and week uh, to working on the camper and things were going really well. And then they started not going well. And so then I just set the thing on fire. <laughs> this is what makes me worried about lives. So like, they're just like, oh, there's no editing. So um, often you all ask, like with your Friday videos, like, are you ahead? Like, are you working on the projects? Like right up until you post the video and, um, with the Friday videos, like our vlogs where we do project updates, uh, we're usually working on it right up into the point where you see it. Um, and so we had been working on the camp all week. I was like, this is gonna be a great video. This is gonna go really well. And then it was like the last day and a half, it felt like everything fell apart. <laughs> and this morning I'm like, I, we're, I don't think we're gonna have a video. So let's go live and we'll get to visit with you all and see you and um, we'll give you an update on the camper. And then if you have any questions, we're happy to answer those too. So do you want to start? So I think it was last Saturday we started working on it with the straight it rained, off wheel. It rained for like a couple days straight mm -hmm. though. So that kind of like put a damper on things. We had actually moved the camper up here, uh, I don't know, two and a half a weeks ago, ago to start working on it. And then the weather was super junky. Yep. Um, so the first thing I wanted to do was I had gotten one of these. It's a 3M stripe off wheel. And so this is what I had seen on YouTube videos that you can use to take the graphics off. You put it on a drill and it spins and it like, it kind of like rubs off the graphics almost, wouldn't you? It's like, this is very rubbery. Um, yeah, it takes it off super fast. Mm -hmm. um, I used to like take a razor blade and slowly, but you can damage the paint that way and it takes forever. Mm -hmm. um, and then I have a, a friend who does auto body for a living and he used one of these, not this same one, but he used a 3M wheel and it was just like instantly gone. Mm -hmm. And I was in. So I, last Saturday, we were just like sitting on the deck. I'll be back. And I brought this out. And I was like, I think I'm just going to try it. Like, I think I'm just going to give it a try and see if it works. I asked Tom where his drill was. And uh, before I knew it, Tom was working on it, which was kind of my plan. <laughs> that was your goal. <laughs> and so. I always know when you're up to something when you're like, hey, so. Like. Where's, Where's your trail? trail? <laughs> <laughs> I know I could do it. Like I watched the videos, but I just and you did do some of it. I did. It goes faster for Tom. So, but it was working really well. Mm -hmm. So we started on the side that was like closest to the house. I wish we could show it to you um, right now. Uh, so we just started. There was like these koalas on the side, and they looked very faded and just not very attractive. And so um, you started working on it. Said koala, and then the koala. And so you started working on it, and this actually worked really well. Mm -hmm. The problem that we ran into with it, though, is if you see the color of this thing, um, for whatever reason, we're not sure if it was the wheel or, like, the vinyl that we were taking off. But we started think, leaving, like, some burntish orange material on the Yeah, I think as it. we went further, I think what we started finding, so at first it went, like, really well but then in the places where there was orange in the graphic that was like very stubborn and it kind of smeared a little bit so we were able to get the ones on the side off okay I think because the way the people we bought the camper from parked it outside always they didn't have any way yeah, to store it, it never ever went inside and the front was facing south if I remember uh, correctly yep. ish yep and so the sides were a little more protected from the sun so we did the side and that actually went really well and then Tom moved around to the front and that 
didn't go quite so well. <laughs> oh, like you could get the middle of the writing off, but like the perimeter, that was like not going anywhere. Yeah, and definitely where there was orange, that was like way harder to get off. And in some spots, it wouldn't come off at all. And so, um, so, so we were getting a little frustrated with that. Um, Tom, also, we needed to like wax and buff and like bring the, the outside back to the entire life. surface of the camper was like a white chalky. Like if you wiped your finger on, you were going to leave a, a, a cleaner mark. And so it was just oxidation from it sitting outside for seven and a half years every day. Yeah. Um, so, yeah. Um, this entire conversation will not be about taking graphics off the camper. No. Um, thank you, Claire. Uh, when will your Facebook group be opening up again? We will not be. Our, we have a private decluttering Facebook group. There's a small membership fee that goes with it. But I post daily videos in there and we work through stuff together. Um, it will not be opening publicly probably ever again, but we have a waiting list. So if you want to join the waiting list when we have some spots open up, then we would love to have you in there. It is a super cool and fun group. There will be a link in the description when we're done here to join the waiting list. So just, you know, and you can for the Take Your House Back course, if you wanted to give it as a last minute Mother's Day gift, if you go to takeyourhouseback.com, scroll to towards the bottom, you'll see where you can still give it as a Mother's Day gift. Why are we selling over. the camper? Yeah, I was going to say, wrap it up, dog. Yeah, sorry. <laughs> Why are we selling the camper? Somebody asked that. Um, so we, we are- We put so much time and love and I know. our hearts into it. Okay. Uh, we're selling the camper. It really felt too big for the type of traveling that we want to do. Yeah, actually forward. way too big. Mm -hmm. So we want to find something that is shorter, a little more compact. Um, so not a hybrid, though. Not like the original one where the sides fold out. We don't want one of those. Yeah. So, so anyways- so long story short, we like the front graphic did not come off all the way. You could still see like koala written out. And again, the reason we wanted to do this, I wanted to do this. Tom did not want anything to do with this is because I felt like we made the inside so nice. And then the outside just looked really dull. And when you really notice it is when you go to other campgrounds and you see all the pretty campers there and ours oh, look very you don't sad. want to be the sore thumb in the group and huh? i normally do not compare ourselves to others like i honestly actually usually don't couldn't care less like what we're driving or who has what around us but they're just so pretty like there was just some campers that were so pretty and i'm like ours is so pretty on the outside i want it to look pretty on the or, or yeah, so pretty on the say, inside yeah. i want it to look pretty on the outside so um yeah so anyway, we have to figure out some creative solutions. Um, and then like Tom dumped over the bottle of the stuff he was using to polish it. And um, the and the graphic we had got for the front wasn't going to cover up where it still said Koala now. So that's why. Basically, I set the camper on fire. That's why I closed this. <laughs> I didn't want you to see the carnage that was left in the driveway. <laughs> can you paint the outside of the camper? Yeah. What is the outside, Tom? You can explain it's, it better. It's, it's a fiberglass exterior, so it's the what you see at the shiny face is called gel coat. Um, it's just, it's fiberglass. It's a fiberglass wall. Yeah. So I don't think you could paint it. You can paint it. Oh, you can, but we're not painting it. We're not painting it. <laughs> so instead, Emma says there's probably a lesson there, Don. Yes, I'm comparing ourselves to others, and this is what I get. <laughs> Kendall, thank you so much. Um, Okay, even though everything is going like just took a turn for the worse and is not going right with this, I still enjoy these types this of projects. Camper, and not life in general. Yeah, no, no, life's okay. pretty great. Um, okay. like some people knit, crochet, needlepoint, <laughs> contact paper. I love <laughs> like doing putsy things, like taping off all the graphics on a camper and spray. And I think we don't need to be spending our time doing this right now. <laughs> it's enjoyable for me. Like I just need those putsy things to like just you let your brain process and. Anyways, we got some of the graphics painted. We masked them off. We painted them. Tom, the whole entire time, was like, this is not going to look good. This is not going to look good. Imagine that. When it was done, it it actually looked pretty good. So I feel like that's going... I feel like that part is going well. It's just we got to figure out yes, how to... Yes, we can do a vinyl wrap on it. We actually bought like some generic... They're not here yet. That right? was the other thing. Our graphics got delayed. The extra Even ones though we, we paid to get them shipped sooner. Whatever. Yeah. <laughs> 2021, what do you expect? Yeah. We, can't uh, count so on we have extra graphics to go over where we took off. Yes. 
And we had thought the graphic we had for the front, it was like a mountain scene. Do you want to grab it? There's one right there. <laughs> Would cover up the front really nicely. And then we got that and Tom opened it up and started unrolling it. Oh, you can't really look. No, 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 no. you can tell. <laughs> as soon as I grabbed this, I was like, this ain't over. Anyone who knows anything about vinyl, these are these are kinks. So when you lay it out, it's all it's all wavy. And I kept so when you like, take the backer off, <laughs> it's not held on by the front like it's, it's supposed to good. to hold it together. Anyway, we don't I know. Need this. Tom's like, this isn't gonna work. I'm like, it'll be fine. It will work. It's gonna be fine. I'm like, it's not gonna be fine. <laughs> that was I do concede that. The graphic situation is not good. The painting, the ones that are already okay, on it are so good. Okay, so you said we're not talking about campers the whole time. Let's. Okay, I'm sorry. We're only uh, how many minutes in? Ten? Oh, wow, 10 See, minutes. See, I told you. You, you just go, <laughs> Sorry, I have actually been enjoying the process of this. And I do think even though it's been a big pain in the butt, it's going to turn out well and it's going to be worth it. Sure. Tom has yet to for be the convinced next, of For that. the next people. For the next people. <laughs> yeah. The other thing, too, is I don't know, like, why we're looking for a new camper. Um, we don't have, I don't think we like this camper anymore. Like, all the, like, I feel like it has a, like, a history now of, like, we just want to. It's wronged us. <laughs> Did you want to mention quick about the excursion? We haven't given, an, you gave an update on your channel, but. I'm saying this right here. A minute, 11, 25, 27. I am not selling the excursion. Not doing it. I know the whole good money after bad, all that whole shenanigans. Yeah. But I always, I am always fixing stuff to a certain point, and then I'm like done with you, and then I sell it, and then kind of like the camper. I kind of just like <laughs> am done with all that investment we put into it, and then it's gone. Yeah. And I'm not doing that with the excursion. Excursion, or I'm gonna. Yeah. I'm gonna keep going. I think you explained <laughs> it well too, like because some would see say like that's a lemon, like you know, like. But it's also you describe it as also a unicorn mm -hmm. because it's a very rare vehicle to find mm -hmm. something. And it's not a lemon because it's 16 years old with 364,000 miles on it. If it were a lemon, it would not have that many miles, so it'd be that old. It would well, have been like two years old one way with to low look miles at it. Um, it's used. Yeah. So we're hopeful. Tom so has we a, ain't going anywhere. Tom has a few more things he's going to do to it. Watch and then, my next video. So, so we just got to put some more money into it. And then we think it'll yeah, be. Yeah, just more money. <laughs> anyway, I don't so want, what we're gonna I do, want, yeah, I want nothing no in the comments it, about no this. Comments. Nothing. This is not open for discussion, as you can tell. We are planning on taking some more local trips. Tom's family lives about three hours away. Ooh, we should get AAA too. <laughs> yeah, they'll probably be like... <laughs> Tell us your vehicle. Nope. Sorry. <laughs> yeah. No. So we're uh, we're going to take it on close trips this summer and then just see if we can rebuild trust in it. Ooh, watching from two harbors. Ah, see? That that would be an area we would go. We would go there. Yeah. So, um, so we go lots of places. But, but we're just going to take it on some local trips and see if we can trust it again. Yep. And if not, I mean... I mean, we might get to a point where we end up selling it, like top I mean, but as what? of right now, what did you just say? Uh, we're not. Not no. Uh, puppy update: the puppies are doing awesome. We did have to um, change Max dog food. Like, actually, one of you had mentioned, mm -hmm. like he's missing some hair, like either food allergy, mites, something like that. Um, Maisie didn't have any problems though, so we switched up his food, and he's doing great. Like <laughs> he's. Um, he did then get sick. We think he ate something he shouldn't have, which is probably pretty typical for dogs. Yeah. Um, he was, and he was pretty couple days he laid chill low, yeah, later on, but he was but now he's better. Yeah. So, but the girls have been working on training them almost every day and mm -hmm. they seem very like trainable, which I feel encouraged by. So mm -hmm. that's going, it's going really well, actually. So, and how about the shed, Tom? The shed is getting bigger. <laughs> the shed is growing. Um, we expect it to be done. I have no idea when. Two days. <laughs> no, absolutely not. I thought you said two years. That would be good. I would go for two accurate. years. <laughs> um, the shed's the shed's good. It's getting bigger. Um, we are busy. I I'm I'm lacking time to finish it right now. Yeah, but do you want it? There was a question about because if if you had I think it was on your video you had shown that. 
you had to auger down four feet for the poles. Yeah. Yeah. And some didn't understand why we had to go down so deep um, with them. You have to go down four feet in our area to get below the frost line so that in the wintertime when the ground freezes, your building doesn't move up and down with the frost. It's crazy. So you Actually, go four it... feet down. We I set the poles on concrete pads and then concreted all the poles into the ground. And by doing that, then with the temperature change, the building will stay put. It won't go. Because it literally would move the whole uh -huh. building. Yeah. Um, yeah, so it's kind of crazy because I know, you know, you all down south and stuff. Like, you just build it on top of the ground, right? Yeah, so, uh, that would be so cool. <laughs> uh, water, I don't know if any of you know this. Some of you do. Water, we have to go six to eight feet down. Mm -hmm. So the water does not freeze. Yeah. So all you Texans with your foot. <laughs> yeah. We would never consider that. So it makes it kind of a big pain in the butt when you want to run uh -huh. uh, water to a building or anywhere yeah, else. Yeah, it's a big deal. So, yeah, but it's coming together. The sunrises, uh, thank you for asking, are just worth every bit of work and expense to move that building, I think. Like, I don't know. Do you care about the like the view now and how nice it looks with it? Yeah. yeah, okay. I will give a, I'll give a homeschooling update in like five or six minutes. Cause mm -hmm. I'll Tom, I'll get going on that, and then Tom will be like, he'll be doing this. Like, stop, stop talking. You, you can't stop see his talking. hand stop out here, but right? he's going like this. <laughs> Wind it up. Wrap it up, Don. <laughs> um, let's see. Any suggestions on where would the best economical place to buy vinyl plank flooring? That's a good question. Um, uh, we get ours. We get from ours Menards. at Menards is our local home improvement store. We have found it on sale and on clearance, which helps a lot. We will not if we did make over our camper again, we wouldn't put vinyl plank in it because it's heavy, too heavy. We added a lot of weight to this camper, so we would put linoleum, yeah, probably down in it, which is sad, yeah, because it holds moisture in a lot. But uh, how often do you go on dates? Wow. You guys Does had, to, you, you right had to bring it up, didn't you? <laughs> I yeah. can't remember the last time. And how do you make intentional time together as a family and a couple? Hello, right now. <laughs> I think what's tough is like we're all home all the time now. And so in a way, like going and <laughs> spending more time together doesn't always feel. Whoa. <laughs> Apparently we know how Dom feels. <laughs> I don't know. Tom did ask me this morning. It was like six o'clock. He's like, what do I do for Mother's Day? And I'm like, I don't know. I have not thought that far yet. Don also does not like surprises. No, I would be fine with never getting any surprises. So I would say we go on a date once a month, maybe. What would you oh, think? Oh, I think that's I think that's generous. Yeah. Oh, someone says there's a huge difference in vinyl plank. Don't cheap out. We would agree with that because we went with a less expensive vinyl plank in our house uh, when we first put it in five years ago, and it it has not held up as well as like what we put in the camper this time around. You could tell that was a much yeah. What we put in the camper better. this time is much better. Like what we put in our house was like the cheapest we could put in. Like they're very flimsy. Yeah. Like when you held it up, it would like bend. Where the ones you put in the camper were much like sturdier. Oh, oh, oh. Sorry, we're losing place in the comments. Going to Menards without kids counts as a date. Well, uh, well we do do that we do fairly that often. <laughs> uh, let's see. Tom's going to have to start doing uh, tutorials on your channel about buying used vehicles. No? <laughs> I wish I had a cricket thing. Yeah. I could. <laughs> Uh, news on the walking club. Okay, here's what's funny. I came in like the next day into the house Tom had got in the mail and he goes, well, someone beat you to it. And I was like, what are you talking <laughs> about? You it's like flyer in the mailbox. Too, you were too slow, Don. So one of the neighbors I talked about that has recently moved in um, put a flyer in our mailbox for a housewarming party that they're having. Yep. And so then I'm like, well, can I go behind them now and put another flyer in the mailbox yeah, for you're my just walking be copying room? Them. Does that seem like... Whoa, everybody settle down, all you new people in the neighborhood. <laughs> Dude, we've been here crazy. five years. We're not well, I know, but it just seems like one flyer after the next. So I felt like I needed to space it out. So my plan is to put them out this Sunday. So on Mother's But I'm Day. still doing it. Well, does that matter if it's Mother's Day? What? I think it'll be fine. Does it matter if it's Mother's it's Day? It's not a mail day. Plus, I don't think you can technically well, put something in somebody's mailbox. Well, that's the other that's thing. That's the other thing. So do I mail them? 
Or do you go to their front or, door and actually meet these people, Dawn? Our old mail lady said if you put a stamp on it, then you can put it in the mailbox. But I don't know if that's true. I don't know that that's do true. Do you all know if that's true? I don't think that's true. I don't know. I think just avoid the mailboxes altogether. Dawn, could you put a link down below for Tom's channel? It's called Rusty Judgment. I'm not sure if we can put a link right at the moment. We can put one in the description when we're done. Oh! Did you just jump in? No, when it, when I when I released the the comments, jump and I totally lost where I was at. Yeah. Any tips for helping or asking for home projects to get done by husband? Ooh, bag on the mailbox that you can do. Yes, you could hang it from. But the does little that look thingy. like? Whoa! I went through a lot of effort for this. I don't know. I don't know. All right, Tom. Here's the question. Any tips for helping or asking for home projects to get done by husband? He's great at starting and with ideas, just finishing them is hard. Mm -hmm. I'm 34 weeks pregnant with our third, so I can't help much. Oh, yeah. And, and you're nesting and you just want them done. I was so I was halfway through what Donna was reading. I was going to say, is there any way you can start them? And then he'll be like, oh, fine, I'll finish <laughs> like, them. But if you're 34 like weeks pregnant. Bring out the stripe out wheel and just be mm -hmm. like. <laughs> so. What I have found a little bit helpful in the past is to say, like, could we just do, like, this one small piece of it? Or even could we go in that area and tidy stuff up or, like, get it cleaned up a little bit? Or, like, you just need to, like, do something to get the ball rolling again. Or Dawn will be like, well, fine, I'm just going to go do this. And then I'll be like, okay, stop. <laughs> I'll do it. I'm just going to get out the miter box saw and I'm going to do that. Yeah, I don't know if that would work or not. Um, yeah. If anyone else has any ideas, but usually I found it like I don't know. Do you get did you get overwhelmed by the big projects in the house when we were doing them, or was it just a like I just don't even want to think about it? Um, the thing like it bothers me doing all the construction in our house because it's such a small house. Like because I need room to set up all my stuff to work on it, and then also do the construction, and then we're also living here. Like. I recently did a bunch of remodeling at a friend's house and nobody was living there. And so it was like actually really enjoyable because it was just this big empty house. We did a bunch of changes to. Right. Um, yeah. So what stresses me out about remodeling our house is that we're all here. It's a small space. And then I have to pack everything up and put it away every night right. and put it back out and put it back. In. Yeah. I did think it was helpful if I would be like, Hey, could we just put the trim up here? And then I'll finish painting it. Or could we just do and like picking a small piece of it to do? And then it felt like once he got going again, then he would usually go further. Um, Heather says, you've mentioned buying older vehicles in the past. Tom, do you go lower mileage on your family vehicles or recommend staying under a certain amount of miles? So we've just been raised through Dave Ramsey to always buy used vehicles. And yeah, and I think that. Over the if, years, as we can as we can afford better, we don't generally buy as high a mile we've been trying to kind of creep that back but we still always buy used vehicles. mileage has never been a determining factor in me purchasing a vehicle that uh, you can tell with like the excursion ever i've had higher than the excursion um no there was a while where every vehicle we owned was like over, over 250 yeah. <laughs> um it's typically i base it more on condition than mileage because i think well i'm mechanically inclined so, I mean, clearly, so. <laughs> obviously, <laughs> if something mechanical needs to be repaired, I can repair that. But if it were body, I could do that too. But it's easier for me to like pull an engine and put a used engine in than it would be for me to yeah. do a bunch of body work and paint it. So, so I go I, based on condition. Exactly. I think what we've found over Tom owning like sixty vehicles um, in our life is 60. that. You can't beat a, a vehicle that's been well maintained. So mm -hmm. if they're like, oh, here's our envelope of all of the mm -hmm. uh, maintenance Which we've the done to it. had, believe it or not. Yeah. So it being well maintained, um, uh, getting a good package. So you asked like the Denali, did we like that? Yeah, because mm -hmm. it had like really good options from the factory. Mm -hmm. Whoever bought it, like got all the good stuff. And that made a very big difference with the yeah. quality of how it So that vehicle, was. so we had a 2010 Yukon Denali. Um, I bought with 197,000 miles. I flew to Dallas like four years ago and bought that um, and drove it home. Mm -hmm. That was it. Test drove it, bought it, drove it home. Um, that thing was amazing. Mm -hmm. So the package and that it's been well cared for. Mm -hmm. And like Dave Ramsey always says, like, because we've heard people say like, well, I'm not like time, Tom, I'm not mechanical, so I have to buy new vehicles. Well, if you listen to Dave Ramsey, he'll say, well, you'd still be better off to buy a few year old vehicle. Mm -hmm. Even if you have to do repairs, you're still gonna come out ahead financially. So right. 
that's kind of been our. It may be a little bit more mindset. of a headache, but mm -hmm. financially, you're gonna financially it's better. Do I get to do my homeschooling Oops, update? Now? Sorry, it moved again. <laughs> <That's right. laughs> yeah, go for it. And I think we don't want to deter people like with what's gone with on with the excursion from buying used vehicles because I feel like over the years we have saved tons of money mm -hmm. by um, paying cash for them and buying them used. Yeah. Um. So homeschooling. Or actually, how long did it take you to do Dave Ramsey and get debt free? You answer that. I'm going to grab my homeschooling stuff. I'm answering that. Well, we've done it multiple we times. We did it multiple <laughs> times. Sorry. I don't know what to do right now. We're going to make a poor decision, Donna. You left me alone. Um, we did we did Dave Ramsey twice. We went through the course when we first got married, and then we did it again like four years ago. Then we got into debt again. Yeah. When we did it again four years ago, we went hardcore like to the to the T of Dave Ramsey's philosophy. Mm -hmm. And it probably took us two and a half years. But here's what's so cool. It always goes faster than yeah. what you think. And you, when you're both on the same page, it's like and even if you're nothing gonna stop you. Isn't do what you can control for now and like keep working on it. Um you'll you can like do predictions of like, okay, how long will it take us to get out of debt if we're which I got now? geeked out about Tom loved all that. It'll always go faster. Like as soon as you commit to it, here's what happens. You commit to it. Something goes horribly wrong that costs a lot of money. Like you need new tires on the car. The car breaks down. But then you get through that and you will have money come in in ways that you never expected. And so um, just get started and it'll go way faster than you think. All right. So for homeschooling, um, it... I didn't really talk about it a whole lot because it honestly hadn't been going that great. It'd been fine. Like it was fine, but I didn't really feel like we were winning at it. Um, and then my friend Dawn told me about how with her kids in homeschooling, she just got a notebook for each of them. And then every day she writes out their like task list of assignments the night before and then leaves this for them. And so I started doing that and she has a homeschooling like space. So she would just put their notebook at their spot. We don't have that. So I'd also heard about like having a bin for each child. So I got them each um, their own bin. So I just put their notebook in the top. And then they also have like if they have any like workbooks or sheets that they're working on, then I'll put that in here. Um, you can put like surprises or fun stuff too. But then in the morning, because like if you saw my morning routine, I like to try and get some work done in the morning. If they want to, they can get started on it on their own and they can do the stuff they can do on their own and then a little bit later in the morning if they need help with something then i'll go and help them with it or like corbin needs more help with his stuff so like adeline will help or then later then i'll work on his stuff with him so it just feels like it took me till may of our first school year to get things figured out but now i actually feel like we are being successful and it's going really well and adeline is like the little uh teacher's aide who goes around and she checks everybody's mom bins. you need to write in our notebooks say like oh okay got it <laughs> like, I went through everyone else's schoolwork and everyone did it but gage yeah. needs this or... but it was kind of fun like uh wednesday for cinco de mayo she's like what's cinco de mayo i'm like great question so i wrote in her notebook <laughs> i'm like write a five sentence paragraph about what is cinco de mayo and so it was fun so it feels like it's this has helped to uh make things a little bit more manageable mm -hmm. so i like it so it's going good so I mean, don't get me wrong. There's still days where the kids, the girls are like, we want to go back to school and like all this. So, I think those just so days you know, are very rare though. It's they've that gotten they fewer and far yeah. between. So yeah, when I started doing this, then uh, Maggie was like, okay, now it feels like we're actually homeschooling. I'm like, okay, glad everyone <laughs> feels like we're actually homeschooling <laughs> and now. So uh, how do you get kids to help with chores? Um, we really take a team approach to it. It's like, this is everyone's house. We all need to do this. And if they don't want to cooperate, they lose things that they want to do. So we're big into consequences and, um, yeah, making their life uncomfortable if they don't want to help us. So, But honestly, I feel like kids want to help. It's just they don't always um, – sometimes as parents, it's easier for us to do things ourselves. So we have to kind of relinquish some control and let them help in fun things too or things that they think are fun. Like Adeline thinks it's fun to cook and bake. So we have to like also let her make a, a mess in the kitchen if she's also going to help clean up the kitchen on other days too. So will you be growing a garden this year? Yes. Yes. And we will show our garden this year. Um, I'm hoping it's going to be more successful <laughs> this year. So yeah, I'm actually really looking forward to that. So 
Let's see. Any other questions before we, uh, did you get a response to your walking group? I haven't put the flyers out yet. They're going out on Sunday. So <laughs> you all can hold me accountable <laughs> to that unless I get like a federal offense for putting things in people's mailboxes. Don't do it. You will. Do they get an allowance? Our kids do not get an allowance. No, nope. they get money from like helping my parents and my sister and birthdays and all that. So we feel like they are still learning to manage money because of the other ways that they get it that they don't also need to have an allowance on top of it. Maybe when they get older, we might do that. So let's see. Um, when's, when's the party? Oh, maybe that wasn't to us. <laughs> Where did you get the homeschool basket? This is from Marshall's. So I thought because it's going to be sitting out on our shelves over there that I wanted it to be kind of pretty. <laughs> so, uh, did you freak out or stay calm when the paint spilled? My guess is calm. How did you stay calm? If so, um, it takes a lot to get me worked up. <laughs> it does not take a lot to get me worked up, though. But the other day, like three days ago, I we went and got a bunch of spray paint mm -hmm. for the camper and another thing. And I opened the back door to my truck and one of the cans, because I just threw it all in the back seat. One of the paint cans rolled out of the back of the truck and just landed on the ground. When it landed on the ground, it punctured a hole in it and sprayed paint out of the paint can all over the inside of the truck, the door panel and everything. I slammed the door quick and it proceeded to just like mist the entire truck. Yeah. It's a white truck. Side of the truck. It was black paint. Hood and roof, other side. It Literally, made it all, like over it, to the other side. <laughs> it was amazing. <laughs> and I did not get upset. I just was like, okay, well, I need to figure out how to get this off. <laughs> yeah. What did you use? Uh, lacquer thinner. So you had to be really careful not to take the I watched. I watched a Chris Fix video on YouTube. And that's what he said to do. He, he, well, he did a bunch of steps and I followed him. But it took like three hours to get all the paint off. <laughs> We've had quite the week. <laughs> uh, we only have four chairs at our dining room table because I feel like when the leaf is in the table and we put all six around, it just really makes the table big and fills up that space too much. So when we eat a meal, the kids sit at the counter, we sit at the table like facing them and we can still all talk because it's a small space. So we did the whole everybody eat dinner at the kitchen table mm -hmm. for a little while. And then we're just like, well, let's go back to that. <laughs> it, I don't know. It just felt like way more work than when everyone's at work. the counter to like clean up and get people more food when they want it. So yeah. <clears throat> what are you feeling now that you're getting closer to fostering? Uh, a little bit scared. Not going to lie. <laughs> um, I think it's just hard, the unknown, right? Like when will they call? What kind of child will be come into our home? Like you, there, it just, you do not know anything. How long will they stay? What will their appointments be? What will their interactions with their bio parents be? How do you know? <laughs> like, so um, there's just a lot. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry, I'm reading comments. Oh, totally, your face is just like I'm totally trying to show ignoring no you all together. Tom feels the same way. He's on board, but it's just the unknown is difficult. If I can speak for you, you just did. I know. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that's fine. I agree. I agree with what she said. <laughs> um, what homeschooling curriculum do you use? We are using a mishmash. The girls are using teaching textbooks on the computer for math and science. Um, we have some um, master book stuff. We have some other stuff we've just um, ordered off of Amazon um, for the boys. So uh, it's just a, it's a mishmash. I will at some point, if I want to feel a little more confident about it, like do, share it all and what I like about each. But I've been surprised by how much trial and error has been involved with it, finding the right curriculums uh, for us and the kids. Um, but I just, I'm becoming more okay with that and just realizing it's part of the process. So. <laughs> How long do the kids school uh, per day? About an hour. Doesn't it doesn't take long? And then they play a ton. So yeah, I think the yeah the girls like just knock it out. The girls just consecutively do all theirs. The boys kind of do a little bit, take a break, then do a little bit. Mm -hmm. yeah. So and we use computer time. They get fifteen minutes like on the internet. Otherwise, they don't ever get to. Um, so Adeline will use that to like look up craft projects and stuff. The boys will watch like Dude Perfect. Um, and that is actually a really good motivator for them to get their stuff done. But otherwise, uh, 
and we've been asked about like having the computers at our counter in there when we set that all up. I love it. I love that the only place they can go on the internet is right there and it's in the middle of all the action so we can see what's going on. It just, it makes our lives easier for monitoring. And I think that's been really nice. So Mm-hmm. Tom's like leaving for fun questions. He's like, so, no, I'm. <laughs> I, I probably shouldn't even look at all because I can't read when they're moving. Yeah. Will you keep doing homeschool through the summer? We will. Yeah, because I feel like I don't know. It took us a little while to find our footing this year, and it's not a huge time commitment. And I think it'll make it easier for the fall. We'll probably be a little more relaxed with it. But um, how do you declutter, or not? How do you declutter? How do you keep the camper organized? My answer to that is take less than you think you need because we were mm-hmm. shocked when we went down for a month to Florida or three weeks to Florida that uh, how little we, we needed. needed way less than we took all the campgrounds had laundromats so we just did laundry mm-hmm. uh, food we would buy enough food for like a few days and uh, we needed very little like we tried to just be outside as much as possible and um, brought a couple games and how many trucks does Tom own why did you just read that moment of truth <laughs> I, I I don't want to say I think we're going to end this now. So, <laughs> yeah. How, do you can you put a quick count on it? Six? I mean, one was a donor vehicle, like the blue one for that you just need to get rid of. You don't want to know. Single digits. It, it's not more than this. We'll say that. Okay. <laughs> What's been your favorite vehicle you've ever owned? Um, the excursion might be up there. No. Your mud truck? No, no, no. Oh, sorry. Go ahead. Don't answer for me, woman. <laughs> uh, I don't know. There's your been Camaro? so many. Your first Camaro? Uh, no, my second Camaro. The first Camaro is the one in the garage. Okay. You're Get it one. right. You can't remember <clears throat> the garage. The one that before. we sold when we were first married because we needed money. Am I a hoarder? No, I am not. Um, minimalist budgeting. We go every, when it comes to money, we just follow Dave Ramsey. Even like some do snowball versus avalanche. We just did snowball. We just followed his principles because we believe they work. Um, discipline and parenting. I think this is an area you have to keep learning new tools yourself until you figure out what works with your kids. We're big into just natural consequences. Like Gage got a watch for Christmas. And then yesterday he got frustrated with it because he couldn't set the time on it and he hit it on, I don't know, the ground or table or something. He hit it with his hand. And it cracked the screen. And I was like, Tom, like that's all the consequence he needed to know. He just broke his watch because he was frustrated. He's not getting a new one, you know, like let it play out. (laughs) So um, lots of natural consequences, but other also teamwork, like just involving the kids with everything around the house because um, they need to feel included and like they have a role in our family, in our household. Mm-hmm. All right. All right. Good. Well, this has been super fun. Um, we did answer questions about the excursions and puppies all, and all that back towards the beginning. So just so you know, if you were just jumping on, we had, we talked those out, <laughs> but I'm hoping we can get pretty far on the camper this weekend and Get. That's what you want to do for Mother's Day? I would be totally fine. If I spent all Mother's Day just working on that, I would be totally fine. We'll have brunch with my um, mom and dad probably and Diana and Princeton and um, do it. Yeah, get together with them a little bit. But otherwise, I would be totally fine working on the camper all weekend. <laughs> so Maybe you should work up the garden. We could. Okay, you're not. Never mind. Sorry. <laughs> <shouldn't have said laughs> But we are so grateful for you all. I mean, we I know we say this before, but your comments make us smile and laugh. They encourage us. Sometimes they I give cry. Us ideas. Um, like we're just so grateful for your support and humbled daily. All right, you talk because I'm gonna cry. <laughs> Thanks for watching. Is that what we're doing? I don't know what we're doing. We this hope you time. have a really great weekend. We love you. Happy Mother's Day to the moms. We love you. We hope you have a really great weekend. And we're actually hoping to get my mom on for a Sunday for a Mother's Day video too. So um hopefully you'll see her on, on Monday too. So but we love you. We hope you have a really great weekend and we'll see you again soon. Bye bye.